This video is for beginners, the beginning violin student or music student who has no clue about the theory side of music. So this video is to help you understand a few of the basic concepts. And I've listed them here for you. We're going to go over all of these. So first, let's start with the musical staff. Musical staff actually consists of five lines. So we just start off with this line. I'm going to draw all the way over. OK, it's not exactly straight, but hopefully you'll get the idea. One, two, three, four, five. So when you look at music, it will have five lines like this. This is called the musical staff. Piece of cake, right? OK, next is the treble clef. The treble clef is what the violin will have, the violin music will have at the beginning of your musical staff. It looks somewhat like this. Okay, also it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. <laughs> if you can see that this roundish, circleish thing sort of goes around this line right here. This line is actually the line for the note G, so it can be called the treble clef or the G clef. All right, next is measure. A measure is a certain amount of space on the musical staff that is divided by lines. Here is a measure line or a bar line. So from here to here is one measure. Then if I draw another measure line, that is the second measure. So here's measure one and here's measure two. And here's my dog Moses. He's decided to, he's jealous and wants to be part of the video. Okay, next we have the time signature. Time signature tells you sort of mm, a little bit what kind of notes to play, how fast, and the beats inside the measure. It's a little complicated that I'll cover in later videos. But we'll go over the most common one, which is 4-4. Four, four. So you just write it with a 4 over 4. So this was so common back in the day that people, I don't know, I'm making this up a little bit where was, they were too lazy maybe? I don't think they were lazy, but just to make things go faster, they actually wrote uh, a C instead. So they would just mark it as C, which means common time, which is here. Common time is the same thing as 4 over 4. So let's explain what 4 over 4 means. The top number, I'm going to write it down here just to be a little clearer. The top number always refers to how many beats per measure. So I'm just going to write here, beats per measure, just so that you can, OK? So no matter what, it's always beats per measure. The bottom note tells you what kind of note gets the beat. Now, this 4 represents that it's the quarter note. So we're going to say quarter note. Gets beat. So, if someone asks you, what does 4 over 4 mean, or 4-4, four, four, or common time, and you say, that means there's 4 beats per measure, and the quarter note gets the beat. So, just as a little um, learning thing, if you actually had 100 over 4, guess what that would be? 100 beats per measure, and the quarter note gets the beat. Now, I've never seen that in music, and I don't think you ever will, but maybe somebody, somebody will come up with it. But just so you know, the top number is always the beats per measure. Okay, I'll go over that in other videos. Okay, next we have names of notes. Alrighty, so I'm going to erase this. We're going to go over this musical staff here, what these lines represent, and when you see like the dots and the circles on the lines and what those mean. So. The first line here, if I were to put a note there, that is E. And if I were to put a note here, here, and here, 
Okay, you've probably heard this. The lines represent a, a little a sentence called, Every good boy does fine. And that helps you remember the names of the notes that are on the lines. So as you can see, they're on the line. You have to be really specific in music. Don't put it on the space or, or be confused if it's on the line or the space. It has to be exactly on the line. You have to be really kind of nitpicky about that. So, every good boy does fine. Those are the names of the notes on the lines. Okay, now let's do the names of the notes on the spaces. Okay, we started here. F, A, C, E. So, I am going to make this like this. So that would match our time signature for those of you who understand how many notes need to be in a measure or how many beats in a measure. Okay, so for the spaces, it's F A C E. Okay, let's write that down just so you can write it down on your notes if you need it. The lines are every good boy does fine. The spaces are F A C E which spells face. Alrighty, so if you ever get um, confused and you're like, oh man, I don't know what note that is, all you have to do is if you at least know one of the notes, all you have to remember is the alphabet, which the musical alphabet, which I actually should go over, the musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And that's it. Once you get to G, you start over. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So the only confusing part about that is, is if you're at G and I say, What's the note after G? And you're like, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. You want to go to H, but there's not H. It actually, after G, you start back at, at A. So if I say, what's the note after G? You say, A. So it's like the alphabet. So when you're going this way, this is up. When you're going this way, this is down. So I call it up the alphabet, I guess, <laughs> or forward in the alphabet. So up the alphabet. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so guess what? There are notes below the staff and above the staff. So I need to go over that. These are called what you would call ledger lines. So I'm going to write a musical staff down here again quickly. One, two, three. Actually, I need some more room, so I'm going to do like this one, two, three four, five. Draw the treble clef or the G clef. Make sure this wraps around the G line. And write four, four for the same thing as common time, which I should actually, well, I was just practicing. I should actually write it like this so you can get an idea. Okay. Oh, that was not very good because I had to erase. But if you get the right idea, this C, which is probably should be a little bigger, but just say is the same thing as this. Common time, the same thing as four over four. Okay, so we're gonna talk about ledger lines. When you run out of lines and spaces on the musical staff, you can actually write little things. Instead of drawing a whole line across here like this, all you have to do is do a little tiny line like this. It's a ledger line. Like this. And down here you can do the same thing. Okay, so if I were to draw a note down here, and guess what? I wasn't very, very specific. It looks like it's on the line and the space. Not good. So I need to redo that. So make sure that you also make, um, are really particular about that. So that's definitely on the space. That's the lowest note of the violin, which is G. So when you run out of space up here, so we have every good boy does fine, but let's say I want to play a note that's up here, like this, up here. Okay, so I'm going to do that same note down here. And yet, let's say you have to figure out what that is. Who knows what that is? But you know that this note is F. So if you just go up the alphabet, F on the line, G 
on the space, A, on the line. Okay, so let's go over, over here again. So here's F, here's G, F is on the line, G on the space, A, on the line, B, on the space, because there's no line through it. Okay, and I can go even higher, C, like that. And you can go even higher and higher. You just have to go up the alphabet as you're going up the, the musical staff. Now, on the, on the part down here, let's say we had this note here, which is E. And I wanted to go down, so you have to go backwards on the alphabet. So we have E on the, on the line. On the space, I think I'm covering that with my knees, excuse me. Space is D. Then I draw a ledger line. That's what those are called, ledger lines. That, so you're going backwards in the alphabet. E, what comes before E? D. What comes before D? C. Okay, what comes before C? C is on the line, so the next note would be in the space. What comes before C in the alphabet? B. There's B. Then, what comes before B? A. So A is on the line because the B is on the space. And then we get to the lowest note of the violin. What comes before A in the musical alphabet is G. So, those are the ledger lines. Those little, little lines like that. Those are ledger lines. Okay, one more thing I have to go over are sharps, flats, and naturals. Okay, so a sharp looks like a hashtag or if you play tic-tac-toe it looks like that but it's not that it's actually a symbol that makes a note higher so let's say I have this note here which is G okay so because I've memorized every good boy does fine every good so good starts with a G so that's the note G all right so I guess I didn't explain that before. Every good boy does fine. Go with the first letter of the word. Hopefully you caught on to that. Okay, so here's G. Let's say I wanted to just play that G sh um, higher. So I add a sharp to it. So that means it's called G sharp. And you always put the symbol before the note that you're playing. So to give you an, like a heads up, heads up, make sure you play this next note sharp or raise this next note. So you always put it before. However, when you're just writing it down, you actually write like this. Could you please play a G sharp? So that can be a little confusing. When you're writing it, you put the sharp after. When you're writing it on the musical staff, you put the sharp before. Okay, next is the flat sign. Sort of looks like the stem of a flower with the leaf. <laughs> sort of. If you were, you know, to get all sort of like that. Some people that helps. <laughs> okay, so a flat. Alright, a flat, kind of like you're going to flatten something. Flatten the spider or flatten the ant or flatten a grape or whatever it is. You're going to flatten. That means you're going to lower it to the ground, that means you're going to make it lower and you're going to make it flat. So, if I wanted to flat this note, which is every good boy, boy starts with B, so it's B, and I'm going to make it B flat, so you put the symbol before the note. Okay, when you put the symbol down, make sure that the symbol goes on the line or on the space that the note is. So, for example, this would be wrong. If I wanted to make this a D flat and I went like this and I put the flat before, it's right that you put the flat before, but I have the flat on the E space, not on the D line. So you have to be very particular and make sure the flat or the sharp or the natural, which we're going to learn next, is exactly on the line or space. That the note represents. Okay, next is natural. Natural is just the note without being sharped or flat, flattened. <laughs> so 
let's see, let's say I had an A, and then I want to, and I put this symbol, the sharp symbol in front of the A. Sharp is you want to, you get higher. And then I have, so that's A sharp. So then if I had A flat, I'm going to flatten it out, A flat. Now if I had A natural, I'm just regular, just in the middle. Okay, so one last thing, because it can be a little confusing. This is what I'm going to put a natural here, sharp here, and a flat here. If I had an A natural, it's the same thing as just saying, play an A. If you just said that, or play an E, or play an F, or a G, you assume it's always natural. So we have A, let's just put an A there, natural. If I say, okay, now play an A sharp, you're making it higher. If I go back to A natural, I'm just normal. I'm lowering from A sharp to A natural is lower. From A natural to A flat is even lower. From A flat to A natural, higher. From A natural to A sharp, higher. So that can be a bit confusing sometimes. So you just have to um, practice going from a natural is just in the middle, or B natural, any note, just in the middle, just plain, no sharps or flats, just normal. A sharp, you get it higher, or A flat lower. Okay, hopefully that explains some things. I'll be doing some more videos on rhythms and types of notes and kinds of notes and different time signatures. Alright, good luck!